Wolfgang's letter says, Dear Gabriel, please read the enclosed journal carefully. It might help you understand your family's special obligations and our current predicament. God be with you, Uncle Wolfgang. The first panel shows hands and water. The second panel shows hair and a knife. The third panel shows a chalice on a table with ocean waves in the background. The sixth panel shows a scroll. The fifth panel shows someone kneeling. The fourth panel shows a knife and a few drops of blood. A plain wooden altar occupies the center of the chapel. A cushion kneeler at the bottom indicates that the altar is a place of prayer. Thinking of the fifth panel, Gabriel kneels at the altar. Thinking of the sixth panel, Gabriel reads the scroll. St. George, patron of the light who hunts the shadows of the night. Upon my blood I call thee now. Purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road. Thy sword I take up for mine own. Hmm, nothing. Gabriel has the sneaking suspicion that he left out something. Perhaps that's why he doesn't feel any different. Gabriel takes the chamber pot. Putting water in my pockets is really going to give people the wrong impression about me.
Thinking of the first chapel panel, Gabriel washes his hands in the water. I don't cut my hair without a damn good reason. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel puts the chamber pot on the altar. Putting that in the chamber pot doesn't seem to make sense somehow. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel pours the contents of the salt shaker into the chamber pot. I don't cut my hair without a damn good reason. The second panel shows hair and a knife. The hair clipping scissors are spotless. It looks like Wolfgang uses his scissors as infrequently as Gabriel uses his own. Don't get personal. I don't cut my hair without a damn good reason. Putting the scissors on the altar won't help. Do you know anything about this? Yeah, those are Wolfgang's scissors. Thinking of the fourth panel, Gabriel holds his arm over the chamber pot and nicks it with the dagger. Oh, oops. Nearly hit an artery.
talking to the chamber pot doesn't seem quite right. The chamber pot contains salt and blood. I don't cut my hair without a damn good reason. Man, I gotta get more sleep. Thinking of the second chapel panel, Gabriel cuts his hair. I hate this. There. That's plenty. I'm not picking up those scissors again. I've cut my hair enough. That doesn't work that way. Putting water in my pockets is really going to give people the wrong impression about me. Outside the window, there's a nice thick ledge where some rainwater has gathered into a puddle. Putting that in a chamber pot doesn't seem to make sense somehow. The Ritter dagger is solid, weighty, and highly polished. Thinking of the fifth panel, Gabriel kneels at the altar. Thinking of the sixth panel, Gabriel reads the scroll. St. George, patron of the light who hunts the shadows of the night. Upon my blood I call thee now. Purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road. Thy sword I take up for mine own. It worked. Something's happening. Oh, excuse me. I was just vacuuming. I did not know you were in here. No, that's all right. I've done about all I can do in here anyway. I give up. You look tired tonight. Why don't you go to bed? Sure, why not? I will clean everything up. You need not worry. 
I can't believe I cut my hair for nothing. I'm sore all over. The fire's already blazing, and Gabriel doesn't want to put it out. The fire's already blazing, and Gabriel doesn't want to put it out. There's a key on the table. I don't believe it. It's the key from my dream.
The large brass key is ornately shaped and must weigh a pound at least. It fits. A heavy wooden table occupies the center of the library. On the wall is the image of a shield taking up several stone tiles. However, the image in its center looks jumbled and out of order. It moves.
Gabriel slides the last tile into place, revealing a compelling coat of arms image of a lion and a snake that looks familiar somehow. With the shield's image in the proper order, the wall opens to reveal a hidden room. Although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts, Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. This book is entitled Malleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer. Dated 1486, it's a witch hunter's manual from the Inquisition. I'm not so sure I'm really interested in knowing about some of my ancestors. Gabriel's not sure where to start with these books. Thank God Hartridge was a doodler. Gabriel wouldn't know where to start reading the archaeology books. Gabriel's not sure where to start with these books. Gabriel wouldn't know which history book to read. Behind the wall is a shrine to Schottenjäger's past, their weapons, trophies, and legacy. A Schottenjäger trophy room. Fucking awesome. A title catches Gabriel's eye, People's Republic of Benin, by Lowell Cayley. Gabriel pulls out a book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fans, the Dahomies, and the terrible Agri. The book The Primal Ones by John Roots provides insight into these fascinating cultures. Gabriel's not sure where to start with these books.
Gabriel would know where to start reading the archaeology books. Gabriel would know which history book to read. Gabriel wouldn't know where to begin with the religion books. Gabriel pulls out a book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fons, the Dahomies, and the terrible Agri. The book The Primal Ones by John Roots provides insight into these fascinating cultures. Although it probably isn't connected with the case at hand, Gabriel picks up an occult book. It's a book on lycanthropes, shapeshifters. The book claims that lycanthropy is not uncommon. Supposedly, there's been evidence of apparently normal human beings turning into various beasts throughout history, including some famous trials from the Middle Ages. Fascinating. Gabriel's made a few women turn into beasts himself. Gabriel's not sure where to start with these books. Gabriel takes down the primal ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful, nomadic tribes of northern Africa, certain tribes of the southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed, in a perpetual state of war and raiding, some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back, see ancient roots of Africa by early days. Gabriel removes ancient roots of Africa and browses through it. The ferocity of the tribes in the Red Basin region is traceable to their predecessors. In Egyptian time, 4000 to 2000 BC, this region was ruled by powerful sun worshippers. We know a little about this mysterious cult by the remnants of ruins far older and of a culture far more advanced than any that exists in Africa today. See Sun Worshippers by A. Curate.
Gabriel takes down sun worshippers and scans it. One of the most earliest religious practices was that of sun worship. The most powerful cults of sun worshippers lived on the continent of Africa. The African sun god was violent and terrible, and so became his worshippers. They practice a particularly bloody form of ritual sacrifice. The homeland of this ancient cult is still considered a sacred site of power. See Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. Gabriel's not sure where to start with these books. Gabriel takes ancient digs of Africa and opens it. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the snake mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they were the result of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstition. The local people regard the mound with fear and won't go near it. A double snake ring? Gabriel flips furiously, looking for a picture. Oh my god, it's a wheel within a wheel. Gabriel decides to hang on to the snake mound book. Gabriel peruses the titles with interest, but nothing jumps out at him. Gabriel opens Ancient Digs of Africa. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the Snake Mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remain a mystery, though, clearly, they were the result of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists have explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstition. The local people regard the mound with fear and won't go near it. Gabriel looks at the picture again. Gabriel peruses the titles with interest, but nothing jumps out at him. 